the thing is, the conservatives are doing exactly the same shit. You guys are just focusing on the liberals. So yes, this mm. is dangerous. This mm. is something that the, the community shit the bed on this. The community focused so hard on the leftists and did not focus on the important shit the right was doing. We fucking shit the bed on it. Part of the Wait, reason is it's not worth waiting to see what he, what he does before you cast judgment. I mean, yeah, there, there are people who are far right, just like there's people who are far left. Are, now, are you, are you, 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 you the social justice you? warriors to get in power before you pass judgment on what they might do? Hell no. And, and, and they've been proving to be a nuisance to our society. Right. Exactly the same way Mike Pence is. He tried to get a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. What the fuck have the social justice warriors done worse than that? What the fuck have the social justice warriors done that's worse than Trump wanting to ban abortion? Stop the people from speaking. Stop, stop people from expressing themselves. That's what they've done that's as bad as that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, that, I wouldn't say that gay marriage is a more pressing issue than freedom of fucking speech, man. No, that's ridiculous. Come yeah. on. I, I didn't catch that. But obviously, I think freedom of speech is very important. I just don't think that they're banning it to the level you guys are pretending they are for for me and for my country i disagree that that's more important for me the fucking republicans taking over both well, the presidency free, free and the speech. congress is way worse than fucking annoying kids on college campuses needing their safe space hang on, yes, hang, on hang on dusty what did what did you just say was was more important than free speech what what, what exactly was it nothing is more important than free speech i just disagree at the level you guys are claiming they're shutting down your free speech you said we created a boogeyman like this this a people who are easy to hate. The reason the, they're easy to the, hate is because they're affecting our society. I mean, so sort of. Some of them are sort of a little bit affecting the society, much less than the guys you're ignoring, <clears throat> in my opinion. But yeah, but you've created a boogeyman of these so subjugated so warriors. That's what I hear every time you guys say that. <laughs> these boogeyman up basically it's these emo fucking kids with the internet holding stupid signs up and, and behaving like morons that you guys are shutting, shutting them. Shutting down speaking engagements and shit, man. It's fucking disgusting. It's more disgusting than anything the religious are doing at the moment. Except I, to I totally disagree with that. Having religious freedom bills passed, a getting abortion banned, getting fucking gay marriage banned is way worse than somebody walking in on Milo and trying to shutting down his fucking speech. Way worse. No, no, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's not just Milo. It is, it is, it is the fundamental idea of, of, of free speech because if you can do it to, to Milo, you can do it to anyone. So don't just say it's Milo. So are you honestly saying, because you... you, you you, you, you denied this before. you honestly saying that gay marriage is more important than freedom of expression. I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying as far as Milo getting up on stage and somebody come up and yelling at Milo. No, 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 and that the, one is, the, 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 very few free speech, the concept of free speech. Milo yeah, is just a symbol. The concept of free speech, if the concept of free speech overall was being attacked where you couldn't say anything you wanted to in any medium you but wanted by, to, yes, that would be way more important, but that's not but what the by him being happened. shut that's down, the concept is being attacked. Can't you see that? That's that's idiots running on stage, screaming over you. That's not exactly the same thing as the government shutting down your free speech, okay? But it, but it's, I mean, the, the universities and shit that were allowing this shit, but we're allowing just, just flat out cancellations of, of events and that sort of thing. It, it creates a culture that's, that's, that's you know, just incredibly a, a censorship annoying. machine. Agreed. It's incredibly annoying, needs to be fought, but in my opinion, not as worse as religious freedoms bills, not as worse as banning abortion. Not, it's not as worse. It's not, well, the stupid shit they're doing on college campuses is stupid, but it's not as bad in my opinion. So what are we whinging about? Well, the fact that he is our new Dick Cheney, basically is the guy running the presidency and showing what he has done before shows what he's probably going to move towards in the future, obviously. Okay, well, that's slightly concerning, but when he starts fucking doing re really bad shit, then we'll, we'll jump up again. He's making, he's trying to change the laws so he can e more easily sue people and intimidate them. I mean, there have been lots and lots of stories you can read about this and how this is horrible for freedom of speech. I know you guys aren't covering it because you're only covering the social justice stuff. You're not really paying attention to what the right is doing, but the right is doing well, way fucking, worse stuff. In my well, opinion. Hook, me up on, hook me up on Twitter. I'll, I'll friend you on Twitter. I want you to send me all the shit, all the shit that you say that, that, the, that the right is doing. That's really bad shit. I, I want you to send it to me. Okay. I mean, the, the sad thing is I shouldn't even have to. You should have already gone out there and researched it for yourself, especially if you had really strong opinions about trying to destroy the left. No, because, like, no, because it's, it's not jumping off the fucking page at me, Dustin. I know, because you're you. in this, no offense, you're probably in this echo chamber where all you hear all day is social justice weird bullshit. That's what you hear you're the cunt in a fucking storage untrue, fucking unit man. in the bush in Mississippi. Don't fucking tell me about echo chamber. I, I, I'm, 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 I friended you, friend you on Twitter, by the way. I tweeted at you too, cunt, so make sure you send me all this shit.
Welcome back to Think Tank. Hannah Cranston with Sue Dunlap here, who is the CEO and president of Planned Parenthood Los Angeles. Now, recently in the media, you probably might have heard that Donald Trump reinstated the global gag rule. So Sue is here today to explain what that means, uh, what the global gag rule even means, and how that affects you, but also uh, medical providers around the world. Yeah. The United States is a really important funder of women's health, including women's health clinics, mm -hmm. all around the world and particularly in countries with great need. Mm -hmm. And so what the global gag rule does is it says that if any doctor, any provider, any employee of, let's say, a health center or one of the organizations that's funded by federal dollars right. says anything about abortion, including saying, we can't help you with abortion, but here's who can, um, that they're no longer eligible for whether it's $100, $1, or a million dollars, they can't do it. So that means that a doctor can't tell you, I can't help you, but you can go over here. Yeah, that's what I want. I really, really want the, the audience to understand that. So what the global gag rule does, so even if they are not providing abortions, okay, they said, oh, this is where yeah. you can get an abortion, though. They cannot do that if they want to receive any sort of money uh, from the United States to help uh, to help fund their their services. Now, just to give you guys some numbers, about six hundred million dollars a year is uh, provided to international services to help with family planning, which makes it possible for twenty seven million women and couples to access contraceptive services and supplies yeah. and education, etc. So this is a huge, huge deal, right? So how does it affect medical care providers, right? Well. Imagine yourself a doctor or a nurse. You're mm -hmm. trained not in politics, but in healthcare. And you're not allowed to give answers to questions that may come up, or you know that you have to stay in this very narrow lane or box, irrespective of what your patient needs. Mm -hmm. Now, may, perhaps abortion doesn't come up, but what if it does? What if the woman or family in front of you is asking about information? As someone who's studied science, who's trained to be a doctor mm -hmm. or a nurse, y you went into that profession because you want to help. So if someone's asking for help and you can't give it, um, that's truly what it is to be gagged. That's what it's, why it's called the global right. gag rule. And I really want all of you to think about that for a second. It's really horrifying. Imagine yourself in that moment. It's not a moment anyone wants to be in, but where you're scared and you're asking your doctor for help. Now imagine your doctor's also scared, knows they could help you, but they're not able to. That's a horrible situation. That's not what we want for anyone when it comes to health care. Not our family, not our brothers and sisters, not people in other countries, right. nobody. That's a really difficult moment. But when he starts fucking doing re really bad shit, then we'll, we'll jump up and really get New reports indicate that Donald Trump has issued a gag order on certain scientific agencies of government. Now, this gag order has to do with the EPA and the type of climate news and data they wish to publish online. Now, according to Reuters, uh, Trump ordered the EPA to remove its climate change pages. Okay, so let me read that again. According to Reuters, a very reputable news organization, Trump, Donald Trump himself, ordered the EPA to remove its climate change papers. Okay, so essentially telling the EPA to not share taxpayer-funded data and studies with the American people because it goes against his own agenda of drilling for more and more oil. Now, if you don't care about drilling for more and more oil and you think that's great, all right, interesting, um, but you should also keep in mind that the president should not be telling scientists what they can and cannot publish and share with the American people. Overlooked move. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has, for some reason, stopped publicly providing a large amount of animal welfare information on its website. For example, lab inspection reports have been removed from the database, with the department saying they raised privacy concerns. It might sound like a minor bureaucratic shuffle, but animal welfare advocates say thousands of dogs and cats used in animal testing could needlessly die as a result of this. Kevin Chase is the vice president of the Beagle Freedom Project, an animal welfare group, and he joined us in the studio yesterday along with his beagle called George. Watch. 
Kevin Chase, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So if I've got this right, USDA has taken offline, among other things, inspection reports, animal welfare reports that were available to the public, and they're doing this in the name of, quote, transparency, kind of an Orwellian spin on it. Why did they do this, and what are the implications of it? Why they did it is anybody's guess. It's clearly not in the name of transparency. Um, all commercial animal facilities across the country, it's about 7,000 of them, 1,200 of which are laboratories, all went black on Friday. Organizations like ours, government watchdog groups, the press, relies on this USA, USDA database for our work. And our charity alone, we use this database every day to identify which laboratories are using dogs and cats so we can reach out to them saying when you're done with the research we will take a dog just like George Washington who came from a laboratory here in the area and we'll provide him a great home but we have to be able to know who has these dogs and without this database it's complete silence and so what happens I hate even to ask this question because it's so upsetting but what happens to the dogs if no one takes the dogs they're summarily killed that is the standard operating procedure in a lot of places and so if they don't get an invitation from a rescue charity like Beagle Freedom Project then sadly, many of these dogs do die. But when he starts fucking doing really, really bad shit, then we'll, we'll jump up and get him. The State Department in the early 1970s created a unique protected channel for internal dissent. It's interesting. At the State Department, if you want to dissent, you are legally protected. The agency's rules say you are protected. You cannot be punished for expressing your dissent. But at the same time, you're not allowed to dissent anonymously. You put your name to it. Any State Department employee can use this. It's, it's called the dissent channel within the State Department. It's an overt thing. It is not something that frequently gets used, but it does tend to get attention when it's used. If you f work at the State Department or the USAID and you file a cable or a memo that says it is a dissent channel communication under State Department rules, that communication from you must go directly to the desk of the Secretary of State personally and to the other top leadership of the department personally. You can completely get around the entire chain of command and go, chain of command and go right to the top. But in exchange for sticking your neck out like that, they guarantee no reprisals. This is from the State Department rules. Quote, freedom from reprisal for dissent channel users is strictly enforced. Officers or employees found to have engaged in retaliation or reprisal against dissent channel users will be subject to disciplinary action. Dissent channel is a rarely used thing. It sends up a flare when it happens. But the only way that system can exist is if everybody understands and abides by that key rule at the heart of it. No reprisals. You're going to put your name on this so it can be acted on and you must be responded to. But you can feel safe doing that because no reprisals. That's the rule. That's the principle. That's what makes it work. Here's how the White House responded today when they were told that over 100 State Department employees are signing on to a dissent channel message criticizing the new Trump Muslim and refugees ban. These career bureaucrats have a problem with it. I think that they should either get with the program or they can go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is, this is about the safety of America. Get with the program or they can go. Uh, the dissent channel within the State Department, they're doing it right. <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do it. The White House is doing it wrong. Right? You're, you're not allowed to tell people to quit because they use the dissent channel. Right? No reprisals, right? Well, yeah, I didn't know you were going to say this, but in fact, uh, I have a historical reference here from Thomas Jefferson, who back in <laughs> of 1787, you do, Chris. Of course no, you I do. really didn't know you were going to say this, said this, and I think we need to keep this in context. He said, were it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate a moment to prefer the latter. Yes, presidents have always had, and politicians have always had problems with the press. They want good press. The press doesn't always give it to them. But what Jefferson there is, despite all of our disputes, that to the functioning of a free and fair democracy, you must yeah. have an independent press. And that is why so many people were really upset when Donald Trump said, I, I, look, we're big boys. We criticize presidents. They want to criticize us back. That's fine. Yeah. But when he said that, that, that the fake news media is not my enemy, it's the enemy of the American people, I believe that crosses well, you know, an important line. Well the 
White House has just frozen out media organizations that President Trump has blasted as fake news. Instead of holding the daily press briefing today, the press secretary, Sean Spicer, called what is called a gaggle with reporters behind closed doors where he would answer questions off camera. And he handpicked which news organizations could attend. That is highly unusual. Not included were the New York Times newspaper, CNN, and the website Politico. That prompted boycotts. On principle, the Associated Press and Time magazine refused to attend the gaggle. The Times executive editor says, and I quote, nothing like this has ever happened at the White House in our long history of covering multiple administrations of different parties. That Dean Baquette protested and said free media access to a transparent government is of crucial national interest. The head of the White House Correspondents Association has also responded with a statement which reads, the WHCA board is protesting strongly against how today's gaggle is being handled by the White House. Continuing, we encourage the organizations that were allowed in to share the material with others in the press corps who were not. The board will be discussing this further with White House staff. In fact, discussions are underway right now. For the record, fake news refers to stories that are created, often by entities pretending to be news organizations, solely to draw clicks and views and are based on nothing of substance. In short, fake news is made-up nonsense delivered for financial gain. CNN's reporting was not fake news. Its journalists follow the same standards to which other news organizations, including Fox News, adhere. Senior administration officials regularly speak without attribution so that the public can be informed of what our government is doing. Off the record. Just as CNN reports, previous sent officials to speak off the record against the Russia Trump campaign reporting. I don't want to spend too much time discussing this issue because we have a lot of news to cover today, but let's not make any mistake about what's happening here. A White House that has had some difficulty telling the truth and that has seemed to have trouble getting up to speed on the basic competent functioning of government, and a president who seems particularly averse to any criticism and has called the press the enemies of the American people, they are taking the next step in attempting to avoid checks and balances and accountability. It's not acceptable. In fact, it's petulant and indicative of a lack of basic understanding of how an adult White House functions. In fact, Sean Spicer in December seemed to completely understand this. He said the White House would not ban any media organization as the Trump campaign had. He said, quote, we have a respect for the press when it comes to the government. That is something you can't ban an entity from, conservative, liberal, or otherwise. I think that's what makes a democracy a democracy versus a dictatorship. The Trump White House now, led by Sean Spicer's White House operation and the communication division, is now targeting multiple media organizations, and it seems to think it can punish reporters for sharing with you facts that they don't like. They offer rhetoric designed to mislead and confuse you about this issue, such as this from the president today. We are fighting the fake news. It's fake, phony, fake. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people, and they are. They are the enemy of the people. Because they have no sources, they just make them up when there are none. It's just simply not true. So don't misunderstand what's going on with that rhetoric and with today's action banning various media outlets, including CNN and the New York Times. This White House does not seem to respect the idea of accountability. This White House does not seem to value an independent press. There is a word for that line of thinking. The word is un-American. But when he starts fucking doing really, really bad shit, then we'll, we'll jump up and get it. Would anybody like to make a statement? A couple Mr. Of years? President, yes, sir. on the asset forfeiture, we got a state senator in Texas that was, was talking about introducing legislation to require conviction before we could receive that forfeiture money. Do you believe that? And I told him that the cartel would build a monument to him in Mexico if he could get that legislation Who's the passed. state senator? Do you want to give his name? We'll destroy his career. <laughs> Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is still navigating one of the toughest jobs in government without a permanent deputy. After his first choice, former Reagan and Bush foreign policy official Elliot Abrams was vetoed by the president at the last minute because of a column he wrote during the primaries. 
Well, the president vetoed it, uh, which one has to say it's his absolute right to do. These are presidential appointments. But he looked back to the campaign and uh, decided I'd been too critical of him during the campaign, during the primary fight, and said no to Tillerson. Abrams' criticism of then-candidate Trump was in a column in The Weekly Standard. Bill Crystal is the editor-at-large of The Weekly Standard. He joins me now. Uh, so this was a column during the primaries. It was hardly one of the toughest columns right. you ran, but that was enough to persuade the president once it was drawn to his attention. The sequence, as I understand it, was that they had dinner. Tillerson, the president, and Elliot Abrams were at the White House on Tuesday night, uh, two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago. And then on Wednesday, someone... Uh, could have been Bannon, could have been somebody else on the staff, pointed out to him the May column during the primaries where he criticized. He was not a signer, a signatory no, to I mean, the yeah. Never Trumpers on national security. I right. Elliot did not sign the letters, and he actually thought it was inappropriate to sign letters saying you would never serve uh, this man if you were president. He thought the country might benefit from one service, and one should keep an open mind. Uh, he was somewhat critical of the piece he wrote for us was not the most critical piece we published on Donald Trump. Uh, and he, I guess Elliot also said a few other things. I, I gather, I, th I think he met with him. He and Tillerson went in to meet with the president on Tuesday afternoon. The White House had mistakenly announced that he was, Elliot Abrams was going to be at the meeting, which meant everyone knew about it, which put Tillerson more in the position of, in the, you know, this was his candidate, obviously. Uh, the funny thing is I, a third party was told after the meeting, it went well, great, no problem. Well, I was told the same. Uh -huh. And then about four hours later, I believe, actually Tuesday night, I'm told, um, phone calls were made to, to Secretary of State Tillerson saying, ooh, we've got a problem. The president's become aware of some stuff that Elliot Abrams said. I think Tillerson fought pretty hard. I think he went back and said, look, I've met with him now a few times. He, I think Elliot first came in to brief Tillerson for his hearings, and I don't think he intended to really be a candidate for this, but other people fell by the wayside. Elliot has a lot of experience at the State Department and the National Security Council. Tillerson liked him very much. They got along. He thought he could use someone with experience. Uh, and um, Tillerson went back, I think, sort of appealed the call by the president, but the president was stubborn on this. The end result of this, though, is that our opponents, the media, and the whole world will soon see, as we begin to take further actions, that the powers of the president to protect our country are very substantial and will not be questioned. That's the story we should be talking about, and I'm prepared to go on any show, anywhere, anytime, and repeat it and say the president of the United States is correct 100%. That's a White House advisor, right? Oh, my God. Oh my God. It's not even funny. I you can't even. Oh, my God. It, came it was hot. so much worse. I, it's than much I worse. Ever thought. It's much worse. Mm. Wow. 100% correct. 100% correct. It is a fact, and you will not deny it, a fact that was actually a lie. Right. And then again, he learned this, I guess, in. in Autocracy for young, young <laughs> political. Okay, you told me not hold to say. Hold on a second. Hold on. When he said what the what did he say about uh, the power? Powers power of the president are very substantial, and they shall friend, not be questioned. Friend, they will not be questioned. They, they will not this guy. be questioned. That that is oh that is no God. no. They oh are God. they are questioned. My young little lad, Miller. They will be questioned <laughs> by the court. It's called judicial review. Put Let, the front and center. Let's split this really quickly, David Ignatius. The president does have substantial powers when it comes to the borders and when it comes also to securing this country. I've written about it. I wrote that the Ninth Circuit decision was wrong. I believe it was wrongly decided. That said, we have these debates. But when they say, David, that the president has substantial power and it will not be questioned, mm. It will not be questioned. Please, tell me, what it, goes through your mind when you hear that? What It sounds like another country, not the United States. But when he starts fucking doing really, really bad shit, then we'll, we'll jump up and get it. Voters. Yeah, voters. <laughs> are letting loose <coughs> in town halls around the country, and they are putting GOP lawmakers in the hot seat about repealing Obamacare. Take a look. The problem is Obamacare has just collapsed. No, 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 no. You're the man. 
that talked about the death panel. Uh -huh. yep. <laughs> We're going to create one great big death panel in this country that people can't afford to get insurance. We have to repeal Obamacare. Improve it. For right. yeah. And the last I heard, these coal jobs are not coming back, and now these people don't have the insurance they need because they're poor. If you can answer any of that, I'll sit down and shut up like Elizabeth Warren. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because I like it because this is like a power to the people feeling. And I feel like when Obamacare first came out, I remember a lot of Republicans flooded town halls and Democrat law Democratic lawmakers responded like, How, what do we do? You know, you feel sort of powerless up there. But I feel like you're responsible to explain your agenda to the people. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, whether the people are Republicans or Democrats or hate your legislation or love your legislation, you have a responsibility to answer their questions. So no matter what side of the aisle you're on, I am a power to the people girl. And I applaw these people for expressing how they but feel. But I think mm -hmm. that, you know, it is a very good place to uh, confront these people on their lies. And yeah. that's what happened to Representative Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee, oh, yeah. who voted for this guy Pruitt, who's going to unravel the EPA yeah. and pollute the country, okay? So, so the woman says to, us to her, what about that? Mm -hmm. And she says, we're all for clean air, clean water, and want to have a clean environment. And the woman said to her, you voted against that just last month. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so that is the place to go to confront them on their lies because there is lying going on that is beyond belief lately. True. Uh, oh, I agree with that. I agree that yes. you, these town halls, these town halls are a sacred space for people right. where okay. that's where you Great. hold lawmakers. Yeah. And accountable. just for all of that's true. those uh, folks who keep saying that people are paid to go do this, people are not paid to do this. People are pissed off and yeah. you have yeah. to recognize that's it. That's true. Yeah. Have to recognize well, that's it. that's true. Um, I lastly, sir, uh, there are a lot of angry town halls we're seeing across the country. Uh, I have to say, I don't know anybody who has taken, uh, d has done more town halls uh, than you. What do you say to congressmen, senators who are afraid of these angry crowds and either canceling or not even scheduling town halls? Welcome to the real world of responsibility. I, I said to some folks the other night that uh, for the first time I, I hear members of the House not complaining when people don't know who they are. Um, and, and that's on both sides of the aisle, and it's happened on both sides of the aisle. The fact is that right now the heat is on the Republicans. It's on us. And I said this at a meeting of the governors yesterday, that, you know, we asked for authority to change the country. We now have two-thirds of the state houses in America. We have the House, we have the Senate, we have the White House. It's now on us to produce results, and one of the things that we need to do is engage with the public. Republican lawmakers in several states are attempting to push bills that are aimed at cracking down on demonstrations, drawing harsh criticism from free speech campaigners. States including North Dakota, Indiana, and Iowa have all passed laws that would see demonstrators facing large fines and even jail time for disrupting traffic. Other laws make it so drivers will face no consequences for accidentally hitting protesters in streets. Lee Rowland, an attorney with the American Civil Liberties Union Rights Group, said, What's happening is a truly alarming spread of state legislation that, if passed, will have the intent or impact of criminalizing peaceful protests. Rowland went on to say that protests should be seen as a success of American democracy, not a problem to be solved. But when he starts fucking doing re really bad shit, then we'll, we'll jump up again. The thing is, the conservatives are doing exactly the same shit. You guys are just focusing on the liberals. So yes, this mm. is dangerous. This mm. is something that the, the community 
shit the bed on this. The community focused so hard on the leftists and did not focus on the important shit the right was doing. We fucking shit the bed on it. Donald Trump wants to overturn Roe versus Wade and kick it back down to the states, as he said, but that's just the way of overturning it, making abortion much harder for people to get. Yes, he said that. Have you ever gone to Donald Trump's website and read his his official? No, because I'm, I'm not American. I couldn't give a fuck. I don't. I don't, I don't know the policies in depth at all. I know. I mean, it seems like you have a lot of opinions on this for a guy that doesn't know anything about it. But watch my fucking video, cunt. Fuck. Uh, mm, no thanks. I appreciate it, but just it's not my thing. I don't know. <laughs> Well, how much, how you, much you, you should start making response videos. We'd have an epic war, man. It'd be fucking cool. It'd be good uh, fun. Yeah, it would be, it it would be so boring. No offense, but YouTube videos. No, what, do what do I need to say here? What, 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 if I talk over you enough, will you fucking make a video attacking me? No, I won't. I just don't care enough. I'm sorry. What do I, what do I need to do? I just don't give a shit enough about you. No, no offense. I just don't care. I hate on shit all what, the time. What's your, so what's, your, what's your working definition of hate? Uh, dislike to the point of, <laughs> well, acting insane is what I would say. The way they act is totally insane. Acting childish, uh, <laughs> de devolving into ad hominem instead of actually attacking points, you know, character assassinations, that type of shit. Like I was talking to somebody the other day who was talking about Jill Stein, and they referred to her as a gutter whore. Jill Stein! Like, I disagree with a lot of what she says, but she's a really fucking nice woman. So I would call, yeah, calling Jill Stein a gutter whore just because you disagree with her. That's hate. It's like, <laughs> like, do we have to now be nice to everyone? Like, it has to be this, hey, like, we, what's going we, on? Like, we could, in this community, try to have civil disagreements. We could oh, try 100%. the mature thing and have civil, yes, we could. We definitely could do that. We could try to evolve the community and be less little Isn't bratty what we're trying to do right now? Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make amends for the bad behavior I've had in the in the past, and and I'm as much a fault as anybody in this shit. You know, I pushed Donald Trump. I did all all right shit, just like everybody did.